specialised anything. Okay, there's a couple of people not put their hands up for either. Um, so who doesn't like putting their hand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, click if you vote. Um, so, who's who feels they've got a cloud strategy? Okay. Who feels they've started <coughs> upon that kind of cloud strategy? I think not some, some of the people who've started on cloud that don't have a strategy. Okay. All right, so, so when you're thinking about cloud, what is it that you're thinking about doing? Let's just, just throw out some examples. You know, any, anyone using a particular SaaS application? <coughs> Email collaboration? More? Is this not a problem overall, though? Is that you don't know what it is. It's not just a collective term for lots of things that we've been using for a long time. Every now and again, somebody goes, oh, we'll throw that in the last time. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. one of the challenges that email, as the cloud now seems to be the collective term for um, IT, uh, or just stuff we do. Well, so it's not hot to be email cloud for, correct. for years. And yes. then suddenly, you know, in, uh, virtualization is suddenly cloud. I think so the fundamental difference, and I said it in a bit before, the fundamental difference is the change in thinking from a product to a service. That's the difference, okay? It's the change in thinking from thinking about an infrastructure to thinking about the different service. And I think that's what people are talking about. So some people go, yes, I use cloud, and they use hotmail. That's fine, right? That's okay, yes, we do use cloud. Um, some people say, I've virtualized, therefore I use cloud. They are lying. Okay, because just virtualizing some service is not cloudy at all. Okay. So it's more private how do you sorry? It's private cloud. It's not private cloud. No, it's no, it's no, 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 virtualization is not private cloud. Okay, it really really isn't. Well so if you don't meet to the usage of it, if you don't let people sign right. up for it and let me tell you sure the diagram, so you can fill up some of the discussion going through where we're going in this market. Yeah, so that's the fine So right. what actually is cloudy and what are the stages people are going through. So very simply, if we think back, I'm going to draw really badly because I'm going to draw fast here. We think back to the late 80s, we had a fundamental problem in IT. We couldn't build one hard drive that was big enough or fast enough to do what we wanted to do. So what we did was we found a way of getting together a whole bunch of individual disks and collected them together into a way of providing them as a managed service which had built into it redundancy, scale, capacity planning, and everything else. The ability that if one of these nodes failed, the service didn't go down. You turned up here, you didn't spec, I need a 10,000 RPM server, you said, I need some storage. That was the first cloudy thing, realistically, was when you turned consuming these things as individual items and bulk them onto servers, and put them into collective pools, and you put a management interface and framework on top for using those, that also did scalability and redundancy, that was when you guys first started using cloud, you just did it in RAID and you didn't realise it. And then the next phase on top of that is we've all got some physical servers that consumed that RAID, and someone then invented a thing called the hypervisor. I'm not going to have that argument now to draw what that was, but the hypervisor came on top here, did exactly the same thing as RAID did. It broke you away from people turning up asking for a particular server or one server. You had then had a layer which was where the automation, the scaling, etc. went. Now, if you just got that hypervisor and built some VMs on it, and this is where I'm going to use some French, and I'm sorry about this. If you got this and virtualized it, if you take crap, you end up with virtualized crap, unfortunately. And so the challenge is that most people will go and say, no, I run cloud because I run virtualized. You haven't really. You may have turned some of your physical servers into a bit of pool resources, but there's not very much on demand. Probably not much elasticity. No measure of anything that's in there. It's just you maybe come up with a way of sharing some resources, but it's quite cool. Okay? The real way is actually when you get above that, and place automation on top of that, whether that's platform as a service and new way of running applications, or an automation layer on top on how those virtual machines are orchestrated and provided as a service, to the point that the person using these virtual machines doesn't know about virtual machines and just knows about the service they get, like the person down here doesn't know about the disks they're using, they just get a delivered service. What's actually happened, as I think you'll notice as we go up here, is that at every stage, the money and the expensive bit and where you spend all your time and effort is in these management layers, the orchestration, these bits get commoditized. Disks have been commodities for a very long time. Servers have been commodities, for, well, IBM worked that out in the early 90s, and HP are just starting to come to, awake to that fact, but TIN is becoming a commodity, and virtual machines and the hypervisor itself is becoming a commodity. 
The real interesting piece, and the real cloudy piece, when you talk about it, is when you actually start to build orchestration on top of this to use it as a managed service. But, and whether you're using that public-private hybrid, that's the <coughs> thing. But let's, let's grab some use cases and then we'll, we'll pull those up into what the, the drivers, business drivers behind that. So we've heard email and collaboration. Anyone else? Sharing. Sharing, sharing data. Sharing data, so, sharing services. I mean, government's government. Okay, good. Any more? Development, test environment. Seven test. So it's both of your own applications. Okay, we go. Infrastructure. Reduce the cost and share the, the development, non production environment. So while Joe's writing that, we've got a great example of uh, a, a company that we work with, Sega Games, who are a games publisher, obviously a big part of their business is um, Dev and Test, uh, their own um, software. They have a hybrid cloud model, they run their test infrastructure now in a public cloud, and um, of course that helps them only have the infrastructure they need when they need it, they can scale up, they can scale down, they can provision more quickly. So that's the classic benefits you'd expect them to get. But counterintuitively, they've increased their security. The way they used to work was they had to let third party testers, most of their testers are from third party studios, in behind their VPN and let them do their testing there. The way they do it now is they just provision testing infrastructure with a security level specific to a testing studio, ranging from single game to all <coughs> games in the public cloud, and they never come through the VPN. So it's a great example of where they captured the business value of reducing costs. They've shortened their development cycles. They actually do more testing now, so they've increased their product quality. So, so we're starting to tick off some of those boxes. Yes, they say cost. Um, they are more agile because they can get their product out more quickly. They can deal with online, you know, first, first in demand from testers. But they've increased their reputation and reduced their risk. So, okay. so sorry, that's a, that's a big one, isn't it? Does anyone yeah. use cloud to outperform one of their competitors? No, this is interesting. Oh, yes, mate. I think so because uh, we've virtualized the work management, which means we can get jobs out faster than the competition. Right. Perfect. We're going to out the market months faster than the competition. So, is the agility piece actually turning IT from being a necessary evil to being a neighbor? Is that more? It might become a necessary evil to be a CIO. Yeah, that's it. It's that simple. Yeah. Okay, so, so dev test of your own applications is a, is a good use case. A, a, any others? To your business continuity? Yeah, we want them. Okay, go. Any others? Archiving file storage. Archiving and file storage, yeah. Any others? Call center support. Sorry. Call center. Call center support. Call center support. Call center. Just all call center. I'm from Taxi, a shipping company. All call center support being with a system provided by a general partner. So you will call basic software as a service? Which of my service? Yeah, and we also use some uh, some part of sales uh, sales support on the door. Okay. Launching now, uh, launching now time management or let's say shift management uh, or working time management for, for ships and, and also for some. Okay, so that's that's essentially if you look at my model. <coughs> you're using cloud here. Yeah, Bob Dadlow, isn't it? Isn't that yeah. called platform BPM? Yeah. Well, it's still software as a service. He's consuming software as a service. So with I think it's actually up him. Sorry? With labor. With the call center. No, no, no. The call center. Call center staff for your staff, or are they outsourced? Call center staff is outsourced. Yeah, yeah. So he's using software as a service. So we're taking a, a necessary but non differentiating business function and, and moving it to a service that does that very well, effectively reducing. Outsourcing and particularly business process outsourcing. Okay. So BPO, can you give us an example of what you're doing BPO wise that you would say is cloudy? Well yeah, it's been for some time to get some benefits. Right, okay. So I mean that's that like the RSM ten kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean yeah, they provide a similar service where they outsource all your Yeah. <laughs>